This is Tundra Homestead. Now, Bethesda Creation Club has proved fairly controversial, but have they finally put something up worth buying? Let's take a look. Hey, how's it going? And welcome to the first of a new series on player homes in Skyrim. I'll be covering both vanilla and mods, and we kick off the series with one you have to pay real actual cash for which is Tundra Homestead, and it'll cost you $3 or approximately £2.15 in real money. This is a mod produced by Eleonora, a modder well known by players and modders alike for the quality of her work and for attention to detail. So expectations are high with this mod, and because you're paying for this, I'll be making the video a little longer so you'll see exactly what you get for your money. Now, the Tundra Homestead is located just east of my favourite city, White Run. When you first approach the home, you'll find a letter nailed to the door frame telling potential buyers that if they're interested in buying the home, to go and speak to the Jarl Steward, which will either be Preventus Abagini or Brill, depending on what stage of the Civil War you're at. And the letter reads, Homestead for sale. This home and its surrounding environs is available for purchase. I've had many tourist adventures in Skyrim, but now I'm afraid I must leave it behind. The war has made life very difficult on all of us, and I fear that the worst is yet to come. I have entrusted the steward in Dragon's Reach with managing the sale of my homestead. If interested, please seek him out. I think this is actually meant to be the quest part of attaining the uh, property. Uh, not much of a quest, to be honest with you, but it does and add like a little bit of depth to uh, the purchase of the property and the reasons why it's for sale. But anyway, pop up to Bra uh, Dragon's Reach and speak to the steward. And I suggest you don't hit the wrong dialogue option and pick up another irritating side quest. But that said, you bought it, seven and a half thousand gold, which is quite a lot of money. Um, head back and have a look at your new home. Now, as I said, seven and a half thousand gold is a lot of money, but you do not have to be a thane to buy it, so you can skip that whole uh, part of the section till later on if you want to. Um, again, worth noting that Breeze Home will cost you around about six and a half thousand gold to purchase fully furnished. Um, so we want to really see if uh, this house is worth the extra money. Now, another thing worth noting is the exterior is close to several spawn points, uh, which can result in attacks from dragons and wild animals, and a world interaction spawn point is located on the road right beside the house. Uh, now, if you don't know what that is, uh, world interactions are random events that can occur as you explore uh, Skyrim. Some events force your involvement, other needs you to make the first move, or they will just pass on by. And some of these do not require involvement to uh, complete. Some may involve fighting. All the unnamed NPCs and animals uh, involved in this will be levelled. So that's worth bearing in mind. But if we actually look at the location, it's absolutely stunning. I think Eleanor has added in uh, a few trees and it's right beside the river and incredibly close to uh, Whiterun itself. But of course, you don't actually have the protection of living within the city walls. Okay, if we take a look outside, we have the uh, blacksmith area, and we have all the usual stuff, a smelter, and we have the anvil, and a workbench, a tanning rack, and a grinding wheel. It also comes with a chest for your smithing supplies and a strong box for your smithing gear and potions. So everything you need there. And I've checked and as far as I can tell uh, the chest and strong box are safe storage. Uh, I can't guarantee the same for the barrels though. And situated just behind the property we have a small vegetable garden. It has three potato plants, two cabbages, two gourds, and two leeks and it has eight open planters which you can put whatever you like in great for alchemy that's pretty decent we also have two apries that work in the same way uh, as one at uh, Lakeview Manor um, obviously giving you bees which are good for stamina and honeycomb as well I've never used honeycomb so whatever you use honeycomb for 
you got some. And finally we have the stable area, which I'm assuming is just a cosmetic thing uh, where you can put your horses. Okay, let's take a look inside. The interior is aesthetically pleasing as uh, well laid out with uh, many static items as you can see. Now this is actually handy as an accidental shout won't leave you spending an age uh, resorting your home, which I've done loads of times. Now the house is neatly organised into sections, so staying organised is very easy. On entry is the main area consisting of a seating area with chairs, a desk and also contains several storage safes and a copy of the Ethereum Wars. And moving on to the dining and kitchen area which features a fireplace in the opposite wall with a cooking pot and a baking surface that actually functions as an oven uh, which you followed on how to cure vampirism gives you a way of cooking garlic bread and if you don't know what I'm talking about then by all means please watch that video. You have a lot of storage areas for all your food products. It's a really beautifully detailed area actually. Very very nice. Anyway, moving on, and moving on into the bedroom, which has a double bed as expected, and two single beds intended for children, as well as shrines to Akatosh Amara, cupboards, side drawers, etc. for storage, and boasts a couple of bookshelves. Now I have heard there's been some issues with some people moving children into the home. Um, I honestly can't confirm that or not, but I'm sure that will be patched, And uh, but bear that in mind. Okay, we're going to head down, down to the business end of the house now, and we're going to go into the crafting area, and into the little tower itself. And if you look up, there's a tower. This is probably my only disappointment, it's a real disappointment of the house. I really hope that was going to be a watchtower, and it's a shame it wasn't but aesthetically, it looks beautiful. And this is the area where Eleanor really comes into her home. Not only has she made it look uh, beautiful, but she's actually really given it a lot of thought for gameplay purposes as well. So what you got is, for example, the alchemy area here. It's got chests, cupboards, and, and all the usual paraphernalia, and they're all close by. You can literally turn around, place your potions in the cupboard, pick up your ingredients from uh, a POC3 satchel or the strong box you can keep your enchanting gear there everything's really close at hand and then you turn around and you've got the enchanting table same thing you've got a chest cupboards and all sorts of storage for your gems your enchanting gear enchanting potions and all that kind of stuff really well thought out lovely area you don't have have to move far to actually get the work done so what we're going to do now is go down into what I call the piece of resistance of this house and we head down in through the trapdoor here. So at the bottom ladder we have a circular room similar to the one above with a seat, uh, an open bookshelf and another book cupboard. Okay, directly ahead is a trophy room filled with all sorts of stuff. I'll quickly tell you what's in here, then I'll just let the video do the talking and I'll give my thoughts at the end of the video. So, in this room we have 10 mannequins, weapon racks, weapon plaques and holders for various unique items, display cases and a whole heap of chests. There's a wooden board with places to hold all 10 dragon claws, high shelves, one holds the five bugs in a jar, Torsten skull key and Serex skull key and while the other holds the five paragons from the Forgotten Veil, Oriole's Shield and the Initiate's Ewer. A set of busts uh, holds all 13 Dragon Priest masks, including the Wooden Mask and three of the four added by the Dragonborn. And I'll catch you at the end where I'll give you my final thoughts.
Okay, my final thoughts on this play at home. First the faults, well, to be honest, these aren't really faults, they're probably more of a wish list, but here goes. I would have hoped to see a follower room. I would have liked to see the smithing area as a side part of the house and attached to uh, the enchanting and alchemy tower via an open door, just to make that crafting a seamless experience. And I would like to see the tower uh, to accessible as a watchtower. That said, I think it's a well-crafted home, full of exceptional detail and kept well within law. I think the planning behind it is exceptional, not just for the aesthetics, but how a player can organise themselves. Uh, sections for food, the chests and storage near the smithing and enchanting and alchemy areas, um, so you're not constantly scurrying off to pick up any bits and pieces you forgot. An awful lot of mod creators uh, go for the wow factor and completely disregard the day-to-day -day playing practicality. And Eleanor has brought this to the forefront with style. The question is, would I buy this mod? Well, obviously I have bought it for the purpose of this video, but would I buy it as a player? And the answer is yes, I like it. In fact, you don't need anything more than this. As I said, it's not perfect, but if those issues mentioned above were implemented and it was in white run, it would be as near as damn it. But as it is, it's a great player home that could easily see you through the entire game. But this is only my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Later, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, and please do subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then push the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribe, obviously. Later.